How many times have you accidentally deleted something with Git and then had no way to get it back? I've done it countless times and it's all because I didn't understand Git well enough. That's why in this video, I'm gonna share 10 Git commands and tips that you can use to make yourself a power user with Git. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And I'm gonna do that by showing you advanced Git commands and tips. But if you're not already familiar with the basis of Git, such as adding, committing, merging, and so on, you need to check out my video on Git for beginners. It's going to be linked up in the cards and description for you. And if you want to read an article version of this exact video, I have that linked down in the description as well on my blog. So to get started, I first want to talk about some advanced tips around adding and committing. It's going to be a bunch of tips all in one, but we're just going to call it our first tip. So generally, if you make some changes, let's say we come into here and we just add some text into this readme. Well, you would say git add with a period at the end to add all your files. And then you would say git commit and we're just gonna give it a simple message here. And now you have committed those changes that you just made. But it's a little bit bulky to write this out. You know, we have two commands that we need to write out and I would like to just do this with one command if I wanted to. So let's say we have text two and I wanna do another commit, but I'm gonna do it all in one line. I can say git commit dash a dash m and then we can say this is gonna be our second message. So now when I hit enter, it's added and committed all of those changes for us. Now the only issue with this dash a flag here is it doesn't track new files. So if I create a new file called test.txt and I just put in here some text and I try to do this exact same command right here, we'll say message three, you're gonna notice I'm getting an error. Essentially it's saying, hey, there's nothing to commit. And that's because this test.txt is untracked and this dash a flag only manages tracked files. So this is not quite the silver bullet solution we were looking for. Instead, I need to combine my previous git add with a git commit, but I'm gonna make one small change to my git add. By doing git add with a period, it only adds the files in your current folder. So if we're in our root folder like this, that's going to work fine. But if we move down into a different folder, for example, I cd into this source folder, and now I do a git add with a period, you're gonna notice nothing actually gets added. This test file is still in the unadded section. And that's because I'm inside this source folder and the period only adds files in your current folder. Using the dash capital A flag though, that's going to add everything in your current repository. So now as you can see, this is a stage change over here for this test.txt. And that's because I use dash A, which is going to add everything, not just in the current folder. So what I wanna do is I wanna combine together my git add dash A with my git commit dash M. And we're just gonna say message three. So now if I use these two commands, it's going to add everything in my repository and give me a commit message. But it's kind of clunky writing them both out. So we're gonna move on to our second tip, which is aliases. Aliases are just a fancy way to write out a git command and it's going to run for you. So to create an alias, it's really simple. We're gonna say git config. And what we wanna do is modify our global config. So we're gonna say slash dash dash global. And then we just say the name of the thing we want. So we're gonna create an alias and we put a period and then the name of our alias, which is AC. And this is just going to stand for add and commit. You can call this whatever you want. And then inside of single quotes, we're just gonna write out our command. And since this command is multiple git commands all stitched together, we need to start this off with an exclamation point. So we can say git add dash A, and we want to do a git commit dash M, and then we're gonna hit enter. So we've just created a config for AC. So now I can type in git AC, pass it a message, in our case, message four, and it's going to run all of this for us. So let's create a brand new file. We're gonna call this test2.txt. And I'm just gonna put in some random text. And if we run this, you're gonna see that it actually added and created and committed all of that information for us. And now this test2.txt is inside of a commit with the message of message four. So this simple git ac that we aliased right here allows us to do all of that stuff we had to do on multiple lines all with one single command. Now, one thing that you may have noticed is that we had to put an exclamation point in front of our git add right here. And that's because we're chaining together multiple commands. Generally, if you're creating an alias, git assumes that you're using a git command, so it'll prefix it with git, but in our case, we do not want that git prefix, which is why we put this exclamation point here. If we wanted to create a separate alias, so we'll say git config, and we're gonna do this on the global, and this is gonna be an alias. We're gonna call this ac2, and this alias right here is going to use the other commit that we created from before. What we could do is we could just say commit, we could say dash a dash m, and then right here, we've now created an alias. And you'll notice we have no exclamation point at the beginning, and we don't even have the word git. And that's because if you don't put an exclamation point, git just assumes you want the word git at the beginning, and it's going to add it there for you. So now we could, for example, say that we wanted to git ac2, and we could put a message here of message four, whatever. And then we can just you know make some changes to this file that already exists. 
And when I hit enter here, it's going to add that file, it's going to track it, and then it's going to commit it. And as you can see, this file has been committed right here with this one insertion. Now those last two commands were a little bit complex, so I'm gonna talk about a really simple command, and that command is called revert. So if we just do a simple git log, this is going to print out all of our recent commits. And as you can see, each one has this hash. This is just a unique ID for each commit. So let's say we wanna undo this last commit. I can just copy this hash, and we can say git revert, and we can paste in the hash. And when I hit enter, it's going to open up my text editor. It's going to default a message for us. Since I like that, I'm just going to say that we want to keep that message. And then we've actually reverted that commit. And you can see up here, all the changes I made in that commit are now undone. And when I go back to my git log, you'll notice something interesting. We have a new commit, which is reverting that previous commit. And as you can see, it says, you know, it reverts this exact commit. And we still have that old commit. So when you do a git revert, it's not actually deleting the commit from your history. It's creating a brand new commit that undoes the commit you want to undo. And it's only going to undo that particular commit. So let's say that we go down here a little ways and I wanted to undo this commit right here for message two. Well, what I could do is I could just say git revert. I could paste in that hash and then I could just make sure that I wanted to save that. And now it's going to undo that exact commit for message two. And inside of here, that text two has now been removed because it was undone with this commit right here. And another thing that's really interesting is if you want to just undo the most recent commit, you can do git revert and you can type in head and that's going to undo the most recent commit. So in our case, it's going to undo the undo that we just did. So when I hit that, you can see this text two is now back because it undid the revert that we did previously. So if I just save that, you can see that now we have undone that undo. Now with all this crazy undo and redo, it can be a little bit complex to follow what's going on, which is where our next tick comes in, and that is the git reflog. And essentially this is just a log of a lot of things that you've done in git. So when I hit enter, you can see immediately we have all of our hashes right here, a shortened version, which is nice. We have what commit this is. So this is the most recent commit, which is why it's index zero, and it goes down one, two, three, four, and so on. And you can see the commit message. So, hey, we're reverting that revert is what this has done. And it even has a text. It's like, hey, this is a revert. This right here is a reset here. We have a commit. And that's just because I did some resets in between some of these takes. So that's why there's some resets in here. I'll talk about that at the end of this video. And then you can also see, hey, this is where origin main is at. This is where the head is at for our main branch and so on. So we can see all of this really interesting information and it's all logged out right here. So we can really see what's happened inside of our Git log, which is really useful. And speaking of Git logs, I wanna talk about how you can make Git log a little bit more useful because this is kind of bulky and hard to manage. So instead we can type in Git log and we can have a graph flag. So dash dash graph. We can have a decorate flag and we can have a flag called one line. And if we do all of that, you can see we get this really interesting log being printed out and it has all of our different commits. So you can see we have a revert commits here. We have some messages down here. You can see that we created a branch. We made some changes on that branch and then we merged that branch. So it's making sure we have branching and merging showing on and it's all color coded for us. It tells us, hey, where's the origin at? Where's this branch at and so on. So it's a really nice way to be able to figure out exactly what's going on through the history of your repository in more of a visual representation as opposed to just a giant you know, wall of text, for example. Now, speaking of logs, another thing we can do is actually search for where we made particular code changes. So you remember we made a commit that changed this text too. What I can do is I can say git log dash with a capital S and this is saying, hey, search the text inside of all my commits to see where these text came from. So I could say text two. And now this is going to give me all of the commits where text two was modified in some way. So for example, this revert here is making sure it adds the text two. This revert is removing it. If we go down a little further, we get the original message two, which is the one where we added text two in the first place. So all of our commits that deal with the text text two are showing up here in this list. So it's really easy to say, hey, there used to be some code in the repository and now it's been removed. What commit was that? Or you can say, hey, this new code has been added. What commit added that code? So you can really easily do that log with the dash s flag to search for changes in your repository. Now the next command I wanna talk about is one of my favorites and this is the stash command. So let's say that we're working on some code changes, we're going along and then all of a sudden our boss comes to us and says, hey, we have this super urgent bug, you need to fix it immediately. So you have to switch over to the new branch, you have to make those changes and then switch back to your old code. Well, a lot of times what you might do is you know, might do you know, a git add and a git commit, and then you're going to say like work in progress as your message, switch over to the branch and then come back when you're done, but that kind of clogs up your commit log. So instead what you can do is you can say git stash. And what this does is it stashes all of your changes. So when I click git stash, you'll notice something interesting. All the changes I made just disappeared completely. And all it's done is just replace that with whatever the previous commit is. So all the in progress code has been stashed aside. I can now switch to a new branch, make changes and switch back. And then when I'm ready to bring that code back, I can just say git stash hop. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to take that item off of the stash and add it back into where I was making changes. So it's a really easy way to quickly save your changes and then bring them back, but it's only gonna be local on your computer. It doesn't actually push it up to any repository. It doesn't actually do any version controlling. It's just a way to, hey, here's some changes, stash them very quickly, and then bring them back with stash pop. Now the next command I wanna talk about is a really simple one, but it's super useful. Now if I just type git branch dash vv, this is gonna give me detailed information on all my branches. You can see we have two, we have 21 to 25 and main. This main branch is just the one we're working on and 21 to 25, it's an old branch. I pushed this branch up to the remote repository. I merged the changes in on GitHub and then I deleted the branch. So this branch is deleted in remote, but it's available locally on my machine. It's essentially a dead branch. This is very common, especially if you're on a larger project, you get a lot of branches built up and you merge them into the remote repository, but they never actually get deleted off your machine. So I'm gonna show you how to get rid of those branches automatically. The first command that you're going to need to type is called git remote update dash dash prune. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through and it's gonna delete essentially the reference to your remote repository if the branch no longer exists in your remote repository. And now when I do that git branch dash vv here, you can see that this has gone. And that means, hey, no longer does this thing actually exist in the remote repository, it is gone. And in that case, I want to delete this branch. So what we can do is we can combine together essentially a series of commands and we can even create it into an alias if we want. So let me clear this out so I can show you the commands. The first command is just that git branch dash vv command and then I want to pipe that into this awk command and this is essentially going to search for a particular text and I want to search for the text here that says gone and then I want to put in here print dollar sign one and that's going to print out the actual name here of our branch so if we just hit enter you can see nothing was actually printed out that's just because i forgot to put a space inside of here now when i hit enter you can see the actual name of the branch 21 to 25 is being printed out so this is a branch that no longer exists in our remote but only exists locally so now to get rid of that branch we just need to add one more command onto the end of this and this is an x args command essentially we're passing all the logging of this 21 to 25 to a new command which is going to be for deleting our branch so let's say git branch dash d. Now when we hit enter, you can see it deletes that branch. And if I type in git branch dash vv and hit enter, you can see we now no longer have that branch in our local. And this will delete all the local branches that don't exist in our remote repository. Now the next command I wanna talk about, I actually really love because it's perfect for debugging issues. And let's just do a quick git log here so we can see some commits. So as you can see, we have, let's just go down a little ways. Let's say we want to use this commit hash right here for message three. So I'm gonna copy that. Now what I wanna do is I wanna say, you know what? At some point, I created a bug. I know that at this commit hash right here, there is no bug at all. But if I go all the way up to what's currently in master, like on my most recent code, there is a bug. So I know somewhere between my most recent commit and this really old message three commit, I introduced a bug, but I don't know where. This is where the amazing git bisect command comes in. So let's just say git bisect, and I wanna say I wanna start a bisect. And essentially this is a binary search. So when you say start, it's going to start this up. And then what I need to do is I need to say, hey, where does my bug occur? By saying git bisect bad and putting a commit hash. Or you can leave the commit hash blank and it's going to assume the bug is in the most recent commit, which in our case it is. So we're just gonna leave that blank. Then we say git bisect good and we pass it in the hash that we know is good. We know the bug does not occur in this commit. So we hit enter. And now what's going to happen is it's going to pick a commit in the middle of those two and it's going to automatically transfer your code to that commit. And then you can say, okay, is the bug here or not? If the bug is here, you can say git bisect bad. And what it's going to do now is actually pick a new commit in between this bad one and our good one to say, hey, you know, now where is this issue? And if you know, hey, in this one, the commit is working. We can say git bisect good. And we can say, hey, the bug no longer exists in this commit. So when we hit enter, you can see it's now saying, hey, we've done all of the bisecting. We went through and we found the exact commit where the error occurred. And it says, hey, right here, this commit with this hash and this message is the one where the bug occurred. So now you can go back and look at the exact code from this commit to see what code was changed to see where that bug came from. This is great when you have a bug, but you're not really sure where to start looking. Being able to just kind of jump between different commits until you find the commit where the bug occurred is a great way to narrow down where that bug actually is. Now, the very last thing I wanna talk about is an incredibly simple command, and it just allows you to essentially wipe out all of your local changes. So for example, in this video, I've made a bunch of different changes. I've made a bunch of commits, and I haven't pushed any of them to master yet. And I wanna essentially wipe all of those commits out. I wanna take all the code that's in my remote repository on main, and I wanna pull that down locally and just ignore all the changes I've made. So to do that, you can just type in git reset dash dash hard 
origin slash and then the branch, which in our case is main. So this is saying, hey, go to the remote repository, get the main branch, copy all the code from it, and essentially overwrite everything I have done with it. So when I hit enter, you're gonna notice all the changes to the readme are gone, those files that we created are gone, and when I do a git log, you'll notice that all of those messages we created are no longer here. It deleted everything from the history that we did in this video. And that's because by doing this git reset, that we've done with the git reset hard, it just clears all of the commits, it deletes everything. So this is a very dangerous command because it can get rid of a lot of stuff, especially if you don't want it to. But a lot of times you make some changes and you just need to completely wipe them for some reason. This git reset hard origin main is one of the best commands for doing that. And that's 10 amazing git commands. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out my blog linked in the description below where I have tons of articles just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.